my dear friends today i am here to discuss <coughs> the concept of time so many of your friends <coughs> asked me so concept of time in our life when we talk about the time concept we think in terms of year month week days hours likewise but in case of earth duration of time is such a large that we cannot divide the events in terms of year month week days and hours so we have <coughs> devised a certain different terminology eon era period epoch and age so these are the different term that we have chosen to explain the different duration of time and different events <clears throat> the age of earth you know is 4.6 billion year that is 4600 million year so this entire duration of time have been divided into two major unit on the basis of presence of fossils or evidence of life so azoic and phanerozoic term have been coined to represent those areas of the earth those succession inside the earth suppose this is your earth <coughs> and you are going inside then there will be successions of rock layers so all these successions inside the crystal crystal block give you the indication of the past life and past geological events so those succession which is having absence of life have been coined have been placed inside the term azoic means a means absence and zoic means life so this is the innermost succession of the crystal block now those succession where we have certain evidence of life so we have placed them inside the phanerozoic so broadly we have divided <coughs> the entire duration of time into azoic and phanerozoic so these are the two eon that is the broadest classification <clears throat> earth history is we have further been divided into archean and proterozoic so archean is the oldest time of hot magma upwelling 
So it it was the initial phase of molten mass when Earth was in a molten state. I told you in the last class that Earth evolved in the initial stage. It was in a molten state. So from nebula, when different planets evolved, Earth was also evolved and it was in a molten state. <coughs> So this molten state, when gradually cooled in millions of years, the initial stage was Archean period, during which the cooling and solidification of magma inside the Earth, lava over the surface of the Earth. Give rise to igneous <coughs> hill, plateau, and mountain. <coughs> then further onwards, there were Proterozoic time. So Protero means primitive, and Zoic means life. So the, this phase gives you the certain evidence of primitive life. In the form of algal mats or stromatolites, so this was the phase of primitive life, and this phase is also known as Precambrian period. Precambrian. So inside <coughs> a zoic, without life, a means absence, zoic means life. So that phase of Earth. Those successions of rock that was created initially from this molten state have been placed inside the Azoic duration of time, and in that Azoic duration of time, Archean was the hundred, complete absence of any evidence of life, and it was completely igneous in nature. Igneous hill, plateau, mountains, all those things were created in the initial phase. All those craton. Of India and Sild have been created in this time period, Archean. <clears throat> Now, in Proterozoic, that is also known as Precambrian, the primitive life have been observed over the rock successions. Life itself have not been recovered, but there are imprints upon the rock layers. So, this Proterozoic was further. Divided into Kudapa and Vindian. So Kudapa succession, Kudapa basin of Andhra Pradesh. Have been one of the type succession type area where you find this succession, and Vindhyan mountain ranges of central India have been the representation of this duration, this these rock formations. So Proterozoic time have been further divided into Kudapa time and Vindhyan time, and those rock succession and hill mountain plateau that was created during this time. Have been called as Kudapa rock succession or Vindhyan rock succession. So till time, till <coughs> now we have discussed. First of all, I told you that history of Earth. Just revise what I have discussed. Have been divided into two part. That is, eon. So first one I told you Azoic, then Phanerozoic. Then Azoic was further divided into Kudapa, <coughs> so this was Archean. And Proterozoic, 
in archean dharwar succession have been attached with this duration of time because dharwar succession rocks are those which was eroded from the archean igneous rock provinces and these dharwar successions are the reservoir of metal metals on a large scale now proterozoic have further been divided into kudappa and vindian now phenozoic have further been divided into paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic paleo means past and zoic means life so it was the duration of past life Mid meso means middle middle life and this one is cenozoic means new new life new phase life so paleozoic is further divided into Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian. Then Mesozoic is divided into Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and Cenozoic is divided into Tertiary and Quaternary. So Eon, and this one is Era, and this one is Period. Just like in our life, year is there. Inside year there are months. inside the month there are weeks likewise here is the largest unit of time is eon inside eon there are eras and inside eras there are periods shuruaat mein aapko ye sare terms sunne mein kafi boredom mehsoos hoti hai yaad karna bhi tough mehsoos hota hai but gradually once you understand the importance of them in our earth system in our life then you can easily recall or remember it What is the significance of this time period? ये जो टाइम का कंसेप्ट है अर्थ का इसका हमारे लाइफ में क्या है इम्पोर्टेंस इसको समझेंगे पहले इफ दे आस्क यू एक्सप्लेन द ऑरिजिन ऑफ हिमालय एक्सप्लेन द ऑरिजिन एंड इवोल्यूशन ऑफ हिमालय हिमालय माउंटेन सो इफ दिस क्वेश्चन कम बिफोर यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट हिमालयन माउंटेन वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ हिमालयन माउंटेन एज ए बाउंड्री बिटवीन चाइना एंड पाकिस्तान it's a important boundary it forms a major boundary or it saves india from outside countries intrusion then after it is the reservoir of variety of minerals variety of valuable minerals then variety of herbal plants that is widely used in medication is stored in entire himalayan ranges then it is a climatic boon you, you can say it is a gift of nature to india because its existence create a monsoon rainfall in and around the foot hill belt and lastly strategically strategic significance so these are the multiple significance that is associated with himalayan mountain so first of all we have to think about how himalaya came into existence and when it came into existence then normally it is said that tertiary during tertiary time tertiary period you can say which is the part of cenozoic 
During this time, this Himalayan mountain came into existence from Tethys Sea. There was a sea, Tethys Sea, sedimentation in this basin. There was a basin inside the sea and sedimentation in this basin continued for millions of years and all those sediments crumpled together in long duration of time because of the collision between the Eurasian and Indo Indian plate. So these sediments got crumpled to form Himalayan mountain ranges during this time period. And inside tertiary, if anybody asks you what was the exact time, then you can say it was the Miocene, Pliocene time. When it came into existence. Now further backward, if you move back of this event, then I told you initially, according to continental drift theory, there were Pangaea, surrounded by Panthalasa, and Pangaea got divided into two parts, that is Laurasia and Gondwana land. This Gondwana land got further divided into, <coughs> you can say, Five parts, like this, South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and India. So this India, that was a small segment like this, so it started drifting towards the Eurasian plate. This, uh, this plate was also got divided into North America. Europe and Asia. So all these blocks started drifting in different direction under the influence of convection current inside the stenosphere. So suppose the, here was the Eurasia and this Eurasian Indian plate was also moving towards it like this. So in between when it, it was approaching the Eurasian plate there was a Tethys Sea in which huge sedimentation was going on and because of the collision between the Indian plate and Eurasian plate, there were folding and that led to the evolution of Himalayan mountain. So this is the holistic concept of evolution of Himalayan mountain. So that in this background, you need to understand that concept of time. If you don't know, <clears throat> the meaning of the term Cenozoic and inside Cenozoic Tertiary, what is Tertiary and what is Miocene, Pliocene, you cannot exactly understand the duration of time of Himalayan evolution. So this is the one example I gave you. Another example I am giving you, coal resources. That is the base of our power sector, means thermal power. That we are using at in our home and factories and multiple locations. So how this thermal power <coughs> is generated, I have already explained to you. This coal, variety of coal I have discussed, peat, lignite, bituminous, anthracite. So the best quality, the la largest amount is available in bituminous form, but the best quality is anthracite. So these coal are widely used in thermal power plants for power generation and dis distribution. Now the question arises, this coal resource, which is the base of power generation, how and when? how and when it was formed. So simple answer is Gondwana Basin. The term you have to understand is the Gondwana Basin. 
that is inside India, if you see, there is Damodar Basin, <coughs> then there is Mahanadi Basin, Godavari Basin, Krishna Kaveri Basin. So this Damodar Basin is one of the most important location for Gondwana rock formation, Gondwana rock. So those rock formation which was created during Gondwana time, Gondwana time means what? Gondwana time means later Carboniferous to early Cretaceous. So this is the duration of time that we will study in the concept of time. So this duration of time is known as Gondwana time during which there were submergence of huge amount of plant vegetation inside the basin, Gondwana basin and that created into coal formation through an aerobic decay and degeneration in millions of years. So all those Gondwana basin coal have been the base of thermal power generation and electricity that we have been dependent upon in our home and factory conditions. Now, next example I am giving you about the cotton cultivation. <coughs> this cotton cultivation in India which is the base of the cotton industry, cotton clothes we are wearing. So this cotton cultivation is based on black soil. And this black soil region is mostly in Deccan Plateau. Now the question arises, when this plateau came into existence? So Deccan Plateau is simply it was created by Deccan volcanism in Cretaceous period. <clears throat> this period is also important for the separation of Gondwana land into five units. So likewise, I told you that importance of time concept is essential because if you try to understand different geographical phenomena in different parts of India, so natural question come, in my, come, come into your mind that when this, this phenomena started and how it has been evolving and becoming a major part of our life. So Deccan Plateau was created through Deccan volcanism in Cretaceous period and because of this volcanism there were formation of a basalt mass all along the Deccan region and this basalt when got weathered in millions of years, then we got the black soil. So this is the story of black soil and cotton cultivation, Deccan volcanism, and you have to remember this time period that is Cretaceous, which is the part of Mesozoic. Now another question, most of metal resources, most of metallic raw materials are found in which rock formation of India? There are multiple choices, Cretaceous rock formation, then Dharva rock formation, then Tertiary rock formation, 
and then kudapa so out of the four choice you have to select one out of these four which one formation is having majority of metallic resources in india and simple answer is dharwar rock formation now where it stands in our time scale i told you it was the arsian time period which is the oldest foundation oldest rock forming the foundation of most of the geological succession so this was the phase when there were the solidification of magma so magma lava that was erupting over the surface that was cooling and solidifying crystallizing so during that period <clears throat> multiple igneous rock mountains were created and those rock mountains were weathered and different sedimentary equivalents were deposited in the surrounding basins and those sedimentary successions that was created from the igneous rocks have been termed as dharwar rock succession in which metallic minerals are stored now now again revise what we have discussed till this time i just i have given you the idea of concept of time the concept of eon era and period then i gave you certain example of himalayan mountain then deccan plateau then Gond uh, gondwana basin and through coal formation but then <coughs> cotton cultivation and himalayan mountain so these are the example likewise more than 15 questions are there in indian context where they ask you the different duration of time when this event happened or happening now another topic i am giving you the certain idea about <coughs> this entire earth if you take a holistic view then you observe multiple geomorphic features so these geomorphic features variety of geomorphic features that is available throughout the globe could be divided into two part continent and ocean inside the continent we can observe plateau mountain and plain <clears throat> inside the ocean we also find mid oceanic ridges abyssal hill gait and so many others so these are the geomorphic features if you observe the globe then you will observe these are the features distributed throughout the globe now the question arises how these features have evolved in long duration of time so geomorphic agents think about here i told you geomorphic features these are the features now i am asking you what are the geomorphic agents wind water glacier inside water underground water river water so wind water glacier and marine waves so these are the major geomorphic agents but the question arises why these geomorphic agents work they work at different level and broadly they involve in erosion or deposition according to the circumstances and through these two processes they create variety of landforms
Now, another thing that you have to understand What drives geomorphic agents? What are the driving factors behind geomorphic agents? Why wind, water, glacier and marine waves are working different, with different intensity at different places? What drives them? So broadly you see, this is your, our Earth and solar rays are coming. Solar rays. So this is the equatorial belt and this equatorial belt is receiving the maximum heat of sun. So it is the hottest portion. And moving away from the equator towards the pole, this is the north pole, this is the south pole, and what we observe, moving away from equator, there is gradual reduction in the heat condition. And therefore, the heat condition is one of the factor, driving factor behind. If energy is sufficient in any location, then only you can expect different kind of movement. So this is the hottest condition and moving away from equator towards pole, there is gradual reduction in the heat condition. So the intensity of operation of these geomorphic agents also gradually reduces. So northward and southward, there is gradual decline in energy condition. So this is the one factor that you have to keep in your mind. Another factor is the concept of grade. the concept of grade or baseline of erosion. Base level of erosion. So base level of erosion concept was given by Powell, a, a important, very important geographer, renowned geographer he was. So he said that it is the sea level which is the base level of erosion beyond which no geomorphic agent will work. So if over the surface of the earth, any highland is there, just imagine there is a highland. This is a highland. And just at another place, there is a lowland like this, a cavity-like structure, a basin you can see. If geomorphic agent is working, then this is the sea level. then that geomorphic agent will try to minimize this highland through erosion. And this pr process of minimization is targeted to achieve this base level. So this process will be called as degradation. Because this sea level is the grade that it, they want to achieve. So this is the grade or base level. So all the highlands lying above the grade will be eroded by most of the geomorphic agents. And all these material that is being derived from here will be deposited in the surrounding basin wherever there is lower basin. So here deposition process will be there and here degradation means removal, breakdown. So here term is degradation and here term is aggradation, means filling is going on. This depression is getting filled by the sediments to achieve the grade level. So this is the grade, that is the sea level, that is the base level. So all the geomorphic agents intend to achieve this grade level through either degradation or aggradation and this process of Degradation and aggradation is called as gradation. Gradation term include both degradation and aggradation. Now, try to understand the concept of <coughs> arid, semi-arid, 
सब ह्यूमिड एंड ह्यूमिड सो दीज आर द फोर जोग्राफिकल प्रोविंस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एनुअल प्रसिपिटेशन सो इफ रेनफॉल इज लेस दैन ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर एनुअल एनुअल प्रसिपिटेशन यू कैन से is less than 25 cm then the term is the area will be called as arid if it exists between 2 to 25 to 50 cm then we call it semi arid region then further onward more than 50 to 75 or 100 you can see <coughs> it is sub humid and more than 100 cm rainfall those areas receiving more than 100 cm will be called as humid so humid and sub humid belt is dominated by river riverine geomorphic agent means river will be the most important factor here as a transformation as a factor of transformation behind the surface and arid and semi arid region is dominated by wind and glacier depend depending upon the latitudinal condition the wind or glacier will be acting in highland highland area over the mountain top the glaciers are existing so they also remain dry that's why they are also called as arid or semi arid so over the surface of the earth if aridity is there then wind will be the most important factor but over the mountain if aridity is there then there will be glacier as the most important factor now what are those mechanism through which these geomorphic agents erode the surface first one is abrasion then attrition deflation hydraulic action then multiple other processes are there that will come one by one we will go through these processes what abrasion means if two surfaces so just imagine this is the rock surface and geomorphic agent is working over it and creating a mechanical removal of grains so simply mechanical removal of grains by the geomorphic agent is known as abrasion so physical weathering you can say so here just assume geomorphic agent is there and the rock surface is there but inside the geomorphic agent itself if there is a mass huge mass of water or wind inside that if there is rock particles and these rock particles are colliding with each other mutual collision is going on between rock particles so this term will be attrition abrasion is when geomorphic agent strikes the rock surface and removes the particle or breaks it in smaller fragment then the term is abrasion but if the rock particle inside the geomorphic agent collide with each other and mutually break each other then we call the term attrition so abrasion and attrition are one of the most com com common process through which rock particles are break broken and weathering is going on another is deflation that is a special process of wind so just imagine wind is blowing and there is a rock surface like this so 
So all the rock fragments, particles that is lying in and around the surface will be gradually removed by these wind stream. So just imagine any situation at this location the wind is gradually removing the rock particles and a structure emerges like this. So a depression has been created here. So this depression created because of the wind stream removal of the particles, if it gets the water accumulation through the rain, then we call it oasis. So this process of deflation is the common process in arid and semi-arid region and done by the wind stream creating variety of oasis in desert areas. Now, next one is hydraulic action. Just imagine a huge river stream is moving like this. This is the rock <coughs> portion coastal belt and huge stream, water stream is flowing. So this water stream, when it strikes in the coastal belt, then coastal belt will gradually be removed. So the, this segment I am creating here like this, it is a vertical wall like a structure of this portion. So this lower portion will be gradually removed by water, like this. So this entire column will be gradually removed and a structure will emerge like this. Okay? Now, if this water that is moving inside have created a structure like this here, then water will strike in this cave-like structure. And inside this cave, when it strikes the roof of the cave, then this, this roof will gradually be further removed. When the water moves inside the cave, it strikes and breaks the roof, but when it comes back, air occupies this space. So this is the sequential process. Water moves inside, then it compresses the air already in existing there. So that air when compressed along the wall and when water moves back then those compressed air abruptly expands and creates a sound that breaks this roof. So this is the expanding air. Expanding air creating a blasting sound inside the cave through which the roof of the wall, roof of the surrounding wall is broken and that process is called as hydraulic action. So water itself is not breaking. Water itself is breaking the lowermost portion. This portion was removed by the simple uh, abrasion process. But when cave was created, then water was compressing the air inside and when water was coming back then the compressed air were expanding abruptly creating a blasting sound and that sound is breaking this roof that is called as hydraulic action. Now, think about the condition of <clears throat> Arid belt. Arid belt is both in Ladakh region and Jaisalmer region of Rajasthan. Aridity is at both the places, but difference is here there is cold condition, cold temperature condition 
and here is warm temperature con temperature condition now if question is being asked that explain the added, added belt geomorphology with reference to ladakh and jaisalmer then how will you explain it think about because both the condition in case of india if you observe it one is at ladakh here and another is here so this is you can see the latitudinal difference the latitude here and latitude here is quite different so here the geomorphic agent will be glacier you might have heard about the frost action so here the frost action will be the most important geomorphic process for the breakdown of the rock in ladakh belt but in jaisalmer deflation and abrasion are the most important process because of the variation in temperature condition as well as the latitudinal position likewise if you divide india into geomorphic provinces then broadly there are three major provinces they are himalayan belt peninsular belt and in between indo gangetic plain all the three units are having its distinct features because they have evolved in millions of years with different process initially i told you the india that got separated from the gondwana land this gondwana land when got separated into five unit one unit was india and this india that was carved out of gondwana land was not having himalayan belt and indo gangetic plain so only the peninsular belt like this so this belt was existing at that point of time when the separation was there during cretaceous period so the present india and the original india was quite different present india is having himalayan mountain indo gangetic plain and peninsular belt but the initial or the original india that was created from the gondwana land was not having these two units so not think how these two units came into existence how they evolved with the passage of time so this is one of the most important question that could be asked in in direct or indirect way through upsc so you have to think about so first of all think about the original india that was created through the separation of gondwana land so this original india was having five major cratons so what is the meaning of the term craton craton is the stable block of earth A stable block of earth reflecting least movement least movement so what are those five major cratons so first one is this one singboom craton then bastar craton then dharwar craton
गियर अरावली क्राटन एंड ये छत बुंदेलखंड बुंदेलखंड क्राटन सो दीज आर द मेजर फाइव क्राटन्स विच वर मेड अप ऑफ हार्ड एग्नियस रॉक्स मेटामोर्फोज एग्नियस रॉक्स विच इज स्टिल द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सेगमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैविंग वेराइटी ऑफ प्रीशियस मिनरल्स मेटल्स सो दिस ओरिजिनल इंडिया स्टार्टेड ड्रिफ्टिंग विद द कोर्स ऑफ टाइम इट स्टार्टेड मूवमेंट टूवर्ड्स यूरेशियन प्लेट and when it came near the eurasian plate this indian mass was moving like this so this is the belt of tethian sediment which got crumpled between these two plates the split was also moving with very slow speed so this zone of crumpling of tethian sediment gave himalayan mountain once there was formation of himalayan mountain multiple chain in the northern portion then naturally variety of rivers originated from these areas and they deposited sediment in all these areas for millions of years and indo gangetic plain emerged so this this portion became himalayan mountain and the further foothill region became the site for indo gangetic plain that's all for today all these thing you have to go through in detail in coming classes that's all for today have a nice day bye